Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the methods to avoid using a Microsoft account on the new Windows 25H2. I'm sure there's going to be some of you out there that are curious to see if the methods that worked under 24H2 are still available in 25H2. So in today's video, that is exactly what we're going to find out. So we're going to go through, check out some of the uh, kind of the old favourites, see if they work, uh, some of the ones which were actually disabled previously. We'll try those anyway, just to see if they've magically uh, revive themselves. But anyway, with all that said, let's head over to the computer and take a closer look and see what works and see what doesn't. Okay, so we're on our Windows desktop. I've just performed a clean installation of Windows 25 H2. And at this point here, this is where you'd normally put in all your information and all your details. So I think the first one we're going to try and do is to see if we can still use the Windows audit mode. Now, this particular mode is more for people that are actually making a system that is going to be sold on and then when the end customer gets it, they then have the choice to run the OOBE or out of box experience and put in their own details. So if you're just setting up a PC, installing drivers, making configurations, etc., etc., and then you want to sell it off, this is the method that you need to do. Now, in order to do that, all you do is press Control Shift and then F3 and then wait and then it'll say just a moment and then the system is going to reboot into the sysprep mode. We'll take a quick look at that for those of you that are interested. So as you can see, it's now logging in with the local administrator account, which is specific only to the sysprep tool. So now we're on a Windows desktop. And if we type in Winver and run it, you can see we are on version 25H2. So that has confirmed the system preparation tool or the audit mode as it's otherwise known is available in 25H2 as we would pretty much expect. In order to use this, you have the CES prep tool that is on the desktop. If you want to come out of it or when you're doing a restart, you can choose enter system audit mode. So if you're going to be doing lots of work and in installing drivers and rebooting, you want it to stay in audit mode. But if you leave it in the enter system out of box experience, the next time that it reboots, it will go into the Windows out of box experience for the end user to put in their details, etc., etc. You can go in here and do all the usual things you can in Windows. So if you want to, you can go into settings. Maybe if you want to, you could actually add some accounts in advance. The choice is entirely up to you. But that is the sysprep tool and it's fully functioning in Windows 25 H2. Okay, so the sysprep tool still works as would be expected. And also just to kind of cut out some of the length of this video, there are a couple of methods that still don't work. So put in the email address no at thanks.com or versions of that still don't work. Uh, that was taken out a little while back. So yeah, don't try those, that will not work. And also the bypass NRO, that still doesn't work. It kind of looks like it's working. So you type it in and it goes through, it does a reboot, but it still asks you for the username and password as it would do for a Microsoft account. So both of those still unfortunately uh, not available, but two others which actually do work are as follows, which we'll show you now on the computer. So the first one is gonna be the, uh, the old favorite. So shift and F10. And that's going to bring up your command interface. Now, if for some reason you get to this point and you do shift F10, it doesn't work. You can try function shift F10, depending on your keyboard, you may need to do that. Or alternatively, what you can do is do control shift and escape. And this is going to bring up task manager. So with this, you can then do run new task and type in command.exe. Make sure you put in a tick there to say, create this task with admin privileges, click on okay and this will get your command prompt up. So either way you want to do it, that will do exactly the same thing. So at this point, what we can do is type in start, then a space, ms-cxh, colon, local only. And when you're ready, press enter. And basically it comes up with this, create a new user for the PC. So this is going to kind of bypass for that. So you can just type in a username. So for instance, we could do in here, Ryzen, etc. cetera, uh, click on next, and that will create an account. So that's one way of creating a local account. So that method still works. So that's great news. Or another option as we've done before. So choose your region and your keyboard and skip the other layout. And you can name your device if you wish to, or skip for now. 
And at this point, normally you'd set up for personal use, but we don't want to do that because you'd need to use a Microsoft account. So we'll set it up for work or school, even though we aren't at work or at school, or potentially you might be, but regardless, we'll choose that option anyway. Choose next. And then you get sign in options. And then you can choose domain join instead, as we had previously. Then again, you can type in whatever details you want. I shall put in new user because I'm going to be using this account very shortly to set up the rest of this PC. So you can choose that new user, enter a password if you want to. I'm not going to bother. Click on next and yeah, you're on your merry way. So then you can go ahead, choose all the things here, which uh, you have the option to. Unfortunately, the uh, driver was updating in the background there, so my apologies. So choose whichever settings you want here. I'm basically going to choose no for everything. And then it will just carry on and doing the rest of the Windows install and getting Windows updates, etc. So there you go. There are some methods that still work and there's some methods that still don't work when it comes to installing Windows 11, the 25H2 release. This is from a completely fresh install with the ISO, which has been downloaded and mounted. Now, of course, you can, if you want to, you can just download the ISO and mount it onto a suitable program such as Rufus, that is very good. And also that'll give you the option to bypass certain things such as TPM requirements, uh, not using a user account, all that kind of stuff. For me personally, I, although I know a lot of people use Rufus and it's extremely well trusted, but for me, anything which modifies the ISO is a little bit of a concern for me personally. And also the fact that I'm selling the PC on possibly to someone else later on, I don't want there to be any comebacks. So I'd much rather just do it the manual way with the methods that have been shown in this video. So there you go. Hopefully this is helpful to you. If it is, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and then don't forget to hit the all notifications. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. And also for God's sake, please share the video. YouTube algorithm is uh, somewhat, well, broken at the moment. So if you can share the videos, it will be massively appreciated. I think it's going to pretty much wrap this up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.